Hello there, good to have you with us again. Thanks for tuning in to another instalment of What the Word, where we're seeking to dig into God's Word, read it together, think about what it means for our lives, turn it into prayer and put it into practice, really. So um, we are in Acts chapter 20 at the moment, and we're going to be reading from verse 25. So if you want to turn there in your Bibles, or you can read along in the passage, it's posted below this uh, video in the description box. So let's read God's Word together. So Acts chapter 20, verse 25 says, Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you today that I'm innocent of the blood of any of you, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in, or, in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Now I commit, to you, now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance amongst all those who are sanctified. I've not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing, you yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself, uh, it's more blessed to receive. Sorry, it's more blessed to give than to receive. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They wept as they embraced him and kissed him. What grieved them most was his statement that they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. Okay, so we're following on really from uh, last session where we looked at godly leaders and, and realised that Paul is addressing the, uh, the elders in, Ephe in Ephesus here. And so this is his, his last address to this church that he clearly loves and they love him. And, um, and, and he's charging them um, with how to lead the church, really. And so we can learn a lot about leadership uh, from these, these passages. And so... Um, just picking up a few uh, more things um, from the second part of this uh, passage today and he says so Paul says for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God the whole will of God and godly leaders don't just pick pick their favorite bits to speak about don't just pick uh, the bits that will make them popular or will be re well received you know um, it's tempting to do that. It's easy to do that, isn't it? Just to read the bits of the Bible that don't make us feel so uncomfortable, that perhaps we like or perhaps we enjoy, you know. But actually, godly leaders are to teach the whole will of God, the whole counsel of God, the whole word of God. We mustn't be afraid to, to preach those bits which perhaps are harder and perhaps won't be, uh, it will make people feel uncomfortable, will we'll bring challenge, will bring correction, will even bring rebuke at times. You know, so it's so important that godly leaders, they preach the whole, they teach the whole will of God. And it says, keep watch over yourselves and the flock. And that's interesting, isn't it? That, that yourselves comes first. Um, it says, keep, doesn't, keep, doesn't say just keep watch over the flock. He says, keep watch over yourselves and the flock. And actually, so many leaders um, can get so caught up with their responsibility to care for the flock that they forget actually they have a responsibility to care for themselves first actually because if you're not caring for yourself if you're not watching yourself if you're not as Timothy says to uh, Paul says to Timothy I think it is you know watch carefully your life and your doctrine you know so it's not just about what you teach it's about how you live and how you walk and um, and if you're not keeping watch over ourselves and keep, you know walking close with God making sure we're living right making sure that we are spiritually nourished and refreshed and feeding on God's word, then how are we going to be able to lead the flock? How are we going to be able to feed others if we're not in a good place ourselves? And it's so important. Too many leaders are burnt out, washed up because they're so busy tending to the flock that they've forgotten. They're supposed to tend to their own souls. And it's actually out of the overflow of their own souls and their, what God is, you know, the, the life that they've got with God that they can lead others. So really important there. And he says, keep so yourselves on the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. 
and that word overseers is, is uh, the same um, as, as elders, okay? So he's talking to the Ephesian elders here. Elders are to be overseers of the church, and he gives them this charge, be shepherds of the church of God, which he brought with his own blood. So, they're to, so elders are to be shepherds, which is uh, the same uh, word as pastors, okay? So they're to pastor, they're to shepherd the flock. You know, it's, this isn't just a, a, a job of organising. Um, it's not just a, an administrative job, an overseer. Um, doesn't just administrate and sort out the rotors and everything. They're to shepherd, they're to pastor the flock, to um, lead them in the, in the right way into godly pastures, into green pastures, knows that what food they need, knows what drink they need, knows how to lead them to those places and uh, how to bring them, you know, to bring them on that journey, uh, to correct to, to bring them into line at times, you know, so that they don't fall prey, because it says um, later, it says, uh, you know, it talks about savage wolves will come among you and will not spare the flock. Even members of your own men uh, will rise up and distort the truth. It says, so be on your guard. So these shepherds are to shepherd the flock and, and be on their guard against wolves that want to come in and bring division, because actually the enemy knows the best way to hinder the work of God and the mission of God is to divide the church, is to, to divide God's people. If God's people are divided, then they cannot stand together. And so, and so often, you know, um, the, the, the greatest enemy often is inside the church, not outside the church. And we have to be careful. We have to watch out for those wolves that want to come in and do damage to the church and divide the church and, and, and divide the flock. Um, and the shepherds are to be aware of that and to be on guard and to be on watch and to and to address the issues when they come up. That's what it means to be a shepherd. It's to be on guard and to watch out for the wolves. And <clears throat> we hear, don't we, I never stop warning you, each of you, night and day with tears. So again, we see Paul's engagement, his emotional connection to his people. This is not an this is not a detached thing. You know, we're not just pastors, elders, overseers are not supposed to be these kind of detached figures uh, that just kind of appear on a Sunday morning, deliver God's word and then they, they disappear again. You know, no, they're, they're engaged with the people. They, they're emotionally engaged and, and um, they're affected by the gospel, the message that God has got, uh, to, God's com uh, commanded them to bring, but also by the things that happen in the church. Um, and uh, and then it just ends, doesn't it? Um, you, you, you see the love of these elders for Paul. They love their leader. It says they, um, when Paul finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They wept as they embraced him and kissed him. What grieved them most was his statement. They would never see his face again. And the, you just, you, just um, you get the sense of the love the people had for their leader these elders had for Paul, who was their leader, effectively. And it's just a real provocation in this day and age where often we, uh, leaders are built up and then torn down. And we, we love to question, criticise and pull down authority figures, don't we? That's how culture works. Here, these elders love Paul. They they, they are grieved, they weep with him, they're not going to see him again. There's a, you know, these are our brothers, okay? These are our brothers and sisters in Christ that God has given to lead us and to help us. And yes, none of us are perfect. Yes, you know, Paul has said, you know, uh, you know by the grace of God, I am what I am. I'm, you know, uh, I'm a, I, I was weak. I was the worst of sinners. You know, none of us are perfect. Um, but nonetheless... They love him. And it's just a provocation to us. Do we pray for our leaders? Do we, do we honour our leaders? Do we love our leaders? Do we want the best for them and their families? Just a provocation for us. So, so just some insights here in, again into how Paul calls the elders in the church to lead. So it's insight for church, those involved in church leaders. But we're all called to lead in our sphere of influence, whether it's in the home, in the family, um, in the workplace, in business, you know, in all the, the, these, in the education, 
uh, in healthcare, in the arts, in all kinds of ways. We can be examples, we can be leaders. And so I just want to encourage you, read this through again. What does it mean to you? What's God speaking to you about? And, 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 and turn that into prayer and put it into practice as you seek to influence for God's glory in your, in your environment. Okay, and we'll see you again soon.